All right, y'all. <clears throat> Listen, I'm going to... Um, somebody's going to have to do this, all right? I have to do this video because this has really got to stop, all right? First things first, um, what's going on out there, y'all? And I got to give a shout out to one of my uh, new buddies on the YTBC and one of my subscribers. And I'm also subscribed to this guy, too. His name is 978diplomat34, man. I mean, this guy's got very good content, non-biased. Please check it out. Subscribe. It shares stuff as well, all right? I have to get that out. Now, <clears throat> right here, you see these five guys right here, all right? On my uh, first part of my presentation here. You have Danny Jacobs, Canelo Alvarez, Andre Ward, Gennady Golovkin, and Billy Joe Saunders, all right? Now, before I get into Canelo Alvarez, I want to talk about uh, Danny Jacobs and uh, uh, and Billy Joe Saunders, and of course, Gennady Golovkin. Now, you know what all these three of these men got in common? Uh, they're all trying to get big names on their resumes. They all want big, big fights. Of course, they want to get paid. And I have no problem of a fighter getting paid at all. Okay? All right? <clears throat> However, at this point, they're trying to price themselves out. All right? Um, for example, Billy Joe Saunders. Okay? Billy Joe Saunders recently came off his biggest win of his career. Um, that was against Andy Lee. All right? And he beat him for the WBO um, middleweight title, which is, which is one of the recognized titles. All right? But prior to that fight, he was asked about the Triple G fight, a potential Triple G fight, and what was his thoughts on that. And he honestly came out and said, you know what? I'm not ready for that fight. Right now, that man will outclass me, and he will beat me. All right? So now that he's won this fight, I mean, it's great for him. But as 97A Diplomat um, has stated, it's not too great for the middleweight division. And the reason why I say that is because now that Saunders won the title, that title's going to be held hostage in the UK. So <laughs> at this point, you know, he's going to be like a kill brook. He's going to take on opponents that are either very limited or guys who, I mean, who are, uh, you know, who are ranked in the top five in the WBO that you don't even know. Uh, those are more uh, safer fights than guys like Gennady Golovkin and Danny Jacobs. And recently, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, has stated, called out Saunders and wanted a rematch. And, of course, Saunders fired back and said, you don't deserve one. I don't know. Uh, but let me know if I'm wrong on that. But anyhow, and most recently he had came out and said, I think this was today or yesterday. He said that it'll take him at least 18 months to fight Golovkin. That if he want, if he was good, if he were to fight him, he's going to want four million pounds, which translate to six million dollars U.S. <laughs> wow. OK. You know what I call that? I call that prices yourself out, meaning that you don't want that fight. Now, if you are going to take that fight, they're going to have to agree to your demands. So you're trying to get the, as much of the reward as possible for taking a dangerous fight with Golovkin, which I agree. All right. Now, Danny Jacobs. All right. He came off his biggest win of his career. It was against Peter Quillen. Great win. First round knockout. Now, Danny Jacobs says, was asked about this fight, a potential fight with Golovkin. He said he'll take the fight, but he wants $3 million. Okay. Really? Well, I'm going to quote my boy 978 Diplomat. Quote, I mean, Jacobs, bruh, you know, great that you got that win, but how you don't ask for $3 million and you only drew 400,000 views on your fight against Quillen? Not pay-per-view buys. Views, which means it was free access. <laughs> okay? So, with that said, I mean, <laughs> wow. Now, I'm going to move on to Canelo Alvarez. Now, he's already made a name for himself. He's already got you know, names on his record already. Now, he stated that the only way the Golovkin fight is going to go down if that Golovkin is going to have to lose five pounds, which is a 155 catch weight to make that fight possible. Now, Golovkin came out and said that I am not going to go down 155, all right? It's either 160 or nothing, all right? And I get that. Now, I don't understand why in the world that Triple G is getting so much hate, all right? Yeah, I can understand that him and his management may have past statements about, you know, we're going to fight guys at 154 to 168. Yep. Triple C said the only guy that he'll fight at 154 is Floyd Mayweather. Of course, Floyd Mayweather ran from that fight, ducked it. Um, and then they said they'll fight Carl Frotcher Chavez Jr. at 168. But when Andre Ward answers the challenge, they wanted to fight him at a catch at 164, which I thought that was ludicrous. Okay? Now, I can understand all that. But at least Triple G is not going out calling himself the best ever and disrespecting 
great middleweights like Carlos Monzon and Marvin Hagler saying I'm better than them. You know, it's funny, though, because I've seen people come out with comments talking about Triple G's is accomplished more than what Marvin Hagler's done. He's a greater champion than Hagler. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, all due respect, Triple G doesn't have Thomas Hearns, Roberto Duran, and Mustafa Hamshow, and uh, John Mugabe on his resume. So let's not go there. Okay? Let's not go there. But anyways, um, Triple G is building his resume. I understand it's not as very strong right now, but he is trying to clean out the middle, middleweight division. He's trying to unify it. I don't understand why you detractors, your Triple G, uh, Triple G detractors are hating on that. I don't get that at all. Now you're asking him to go up to fight Andre Ward. Well, let me break it to you. That fight's not going to happen. Andre Ward moved up to 175. You know what that means? He can't make 168 no more. So just drop it. It's not going to happen. All right? I don't know why you guys are trying to race bait this. This is very similar to the Mayweather-Pacquiao rivalry, I mean, which damaged boxing for several years. And I think right here, now this rivalry is damaging boxing. All right? Andre Ward is going to fight. Next year he's going to fight the most dangerous opponent of his career, which is Sergey Kovalev, which I'm going to look forward to that fight. All right? Now. Get over it. It's done. All right. Now, speaking of Andre Ward, why all of a sudden you Triple G detractors all of a sudden Andre Ward fans, right? Then I recall that Andre Ward and Floyd Mayweather had some beef two years ago. If you don't believe me, let's take a look here. You see this title? Andre Ward, quote, I'll drop weight class to fight Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Let me give you a little breakdown on this in case you guys don't remember. Floyd Mayweather was ranked number one pound per pound at this time, right? And guess who was number two on that list? Andre Ward. Okay? Now, at that time, two years prior, Andre Ward just uh, came off one of the greatest accomplishments of his career. He won the Super 6 168 uh, tournament, all right? He beat the monsters of Carl Froch, Arthur Abraham, Miguel Kessler, Alan Green, um, and, of course, who was the other guy? That he beat in there. There was another guy that he beat. I think that's it. But he did clean out the 168 division. He also beat the lights of Ares, uh, of um, Edison Miranda, who at one time was a dangerous puncher. But he said at that time he was going to go down on 160 to fight Floyd, right? But guess what he had to say about that? He said here that Lil Floyd says that he spars with middleweights, right? <laughs> now he's the only man I will sacrifice to coming down to 164. Now he won't take that bait. Now, when Ward made that comment, right, guess what Floyd Mayweather had to say about this in the fight I interview? He said here, quote, that Ward can't sell tickets anywhere. He can't even sell tickets in Las Vegas. So this is the only guy I know that's a gold medalist, right? But, he, he's, but he's a nobody, but nobody knows him, and he's a gold medalist. So if you're not in Oakland, then you don't know who he is, end quote. Now, since then, as I recalled, you detractors, and I'm talking about the Triple G detractors, you guys jumped on Ward. Y'all attacked him and called him a nobody. He ain't shit. He can't sell anywhere. You echoing, it, echoing the sentiments of Floyd Mayweather. It seems to me whenever somebody calls out Floyd, you guys are relentless to attack him like they ain't shit, right? Okay? Now, help me understand this. Why all of a sudden now you guys are, are Andre Ward fans when Andre Ward answered Triple G's challenge? Explain that. With two years prior, you guys attacked Ward for calling out Floyd. <laughs> help me out here okay help me out here i don't get that at all you guys are this points out the hypocrisy with you guys all right and i mean you guys i don't understand the hate that triple g is getting i mean jesus christ man this hate has got to stop and i'm not going to take no part of it seriously i'm not all right i just have to address this out here because you guys got to stop all the race bait and then you know who i'm talking about i'm not gonna mention any names you guys know who i'm talking about i mean i don't know why you guys are trying to make this a race issue all right i don't get it I really don't, all right? Let me cite some other examples. Roman Gonzalez, Tacolatito. He's ranked number one pound for pound in the world by ESPN and The Ring Magazine. And you guys jumped all over that. Y'all felt that Roman Gonzalez ain't shit. He ain't a nobody, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but yet you guys are trying to get him, trying to get him to jump up from <laughs> 112 to 122 to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux. <laughs> you think I don't know about that? Okay, let me ask you this then. How come you guys didn't go after uh, Guillermo Riga down when he called for a catchweight against uh, Vasily Vlachenko, right? Lomachenko. Not only that he did wanted a catchweight, he wanted a rehydration clause in that catchweight too. So why have you guys jumped on him for that? 
Oh my God, my God. Seriously, man. I This is the reason why I say this once and I'm going to say this again. This is the reason why we need to, we hardcore boxing fans need to be paying more attention, give the attention to the heavyweights because they're the ones out there fighting whoever they need to fight, all right? And they can't use no rehydration clauses and catch ways to make fights happen. They're making these fights happen, and we're seeing that right now with uh, Joshua White and, of course, recently Ortiz and Jennings. Anyways, drop a comment below. I'm going to leave the links to those past articles with Ward and Floyd. Share, subscribe, sign it off. Peace.